Hello, friend. Welcome to uh, Village Idiots. If we're nuts for Jesus, we're just plain nuts. If we're out of our mind, it's for the sake of God. If we're in our right mind, it's for your sake. That's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians um, 5.13. Crazy people can serve Christ. I'm living proof. And today we're in Psalms, and we're in a very, very, very familiar psalm. I'm going to add one uh, piece of another psalm to it. This should be a very short teaching. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll do Psalms 23 and 24 today. They're both, they're both short. Psalms 25 is very long, or pretty long. So, um, this is a Psalm of David, Psalms 23. Again, a lot of you may even have this one memorized. It's a really good one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, Jesus, called, Jesus Christ called himself the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, and James says, people ask, not, people have not because they ask not. And so, I shall not want. Have you asked for what you, have you come to the Lord and ask him for what you need? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still or quiet waters. I love that. You know, the blue sky and the green grass or the green pastures, the contrast between that blue and green is so beautiful. And God wanted to give us a beautiful contrast. And so... He makes me lie down in green pastures. If you remember when you were a kid, I used to, we used to live where there was a hill and we'd roll down the hill, the green pastures, the hills and stuff. God, I used to love it, I used to get so dizzy. But the green pastures, they just, they, they do, I get like a good green shirt today, they do something to your heart, that green, green pastures, the smell of them, freshly mown grass, it's beautiful stuff. It makes me lie down between still waters or quiet waters. And have you ever been rafting? Not the rapid rafting, but you're in a, like inner tubing. Uh, I was in Gainesville, Florida once, went inner tubing. One time in my life went inner tubing. Uh, well, I went Knoxville once, but that was the rapids kind. I went inner tubing, and it was wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And it was quiet. It was placid. And we were all just floating along real quietly. It was a beautiful thing. Um, he leads me sides the still waters. He restores my soul. Is your soul broken? Is your heart broken? Has life kicked you in the teeth? He'll restore that. He'll restore your soul, the inner you. Your soul generally represents the mind, will, and emotions. Your mind, your will, and emotions can all be restored by the Lord. Amen. He guides me in paths, paths of righteousness for His name's sake. I like this one. He guides you in right paths or paths of righteousness for who? For his namesake. As a Christian, if you know Jesus Christ and then thus you know the Father, you bear his name. It's his name. You're stamped, you know, Jesus on your heart. He's given you a new heart. He's taken away your heart of stone and given you a heart of flesh. And his name is written on your heart, and your name is written in his book of life. So he guides you in paths of righteousness for his namesake. That's really important. Uh, even even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. They've changed this one. It really bothers me. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, they there's the newer the newer new translation in the new international says though I walk through the darkest valley. I don't like that at all. This this note this in this um, this denotes something much much deeper than that. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you walking imagine you're walking through this valley. And on both sides of you are, it's, it's called the shadow of death. Death is everywhere. You're in, you're in the shadow of death. You're walking, but the shadow of death is upon you. I will fear no evil. No matter what you're going through, you don't have to fear evil. My brother, my brother Keith is, um, is dealing with pancreatic cancer, which is supposed to be 100% fatal. And the five guys, four or five guys that started the same program that he's on, um, I guess six months ago, nine months, whatever it's been, they're all dead. My brother, my brother and his wife searched out this regime that they're on, and my brother and I asked my brother from the beginning. I said, "Do you want me to be real serious and heavy with you on this, or do you want me to to make make light of this and to have fun with this so we can just laugh?" And he said, "Let's make fun. Let's have fun." And so he's definitely my brother Keith is definitely in the valley of shadow of death, but he isn't fearing the evil of it. And so that's that's the way we can 
when something's coming, when we're in the sh the valley, when we're in the, the shadow of death is upon us, like my brother with cancer, we can choose not to fear it. We can choose not to let Satan win. We can choose, like Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away, blessed be his name. We can choose to live like that. We can choose to think like that. We can choose to have our hearts like that. But it's a choice. Whether you fear evil or whether you don't, don't fear any evil. Because it says, I will fear no evil. Not, not just I will, I, will fear, I will not fear evil. I will fear no evil. Don't fear. Jesus said this. Um, do not fear the one. What is man? That, what can he do to me? Says somewhere else. Himself. But Jesus said, don't fear man. All he can do is take away your life. Fear the one who can throw body and soul into hell. And that's, that's the Father. You should fear. You should reverence the Father. Amen. Because he's the one that holds his, your life in his hands. Um, uh, I will fear no evil for you are with me if God is walking with you why would you be afraid of evil evil can't overtake God he's walking with you don't be afraid don't be afraid uh, your rod and your staff they comfort me I love that I, I used to make staffs not shepherd staffs where you know it's got the bend in it but I make walking sticks and I always call them you know shepherd staffs because I'm sure not all shepherds have the it takes a while to bend, you know, you have to get water and bend those. So I'm sure a lot of shepherds just had a piece of wood. And, and uh, there is something comforting about that staff. I think the rod is probably the straight stick and the staff is the, the shepherd's staff. Um, but there's a comfort in that. You know, I go walking. I went walking just a little while, about 5.30 this morning. And I would, I've, got, I've got my own, my, my own staff. But I was afraid of you know, clicking it on the ground, making noise, waking up dogs and getting them barking early. I didn't want to do that. But there's a comfort in that big stick in your hand. <laughs> and that's God's big stick here. Your rod, he says, God's rod and his staff comfort me. Not my own, but God's rod. And that's his powerful right. By the way, it's talked about his right, there's right arm of power. Man, if God's on your side, if he's for you, who can be against you? No one. Let's continue on verse five. You prepare, this is beautiful. I love this one. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I love that. It's like all your enemies, all your enemies are gathered around you. It's like the Jews. Let's, this just came into my mind like a split second ago. Imagine the Jews in a concentration camp and there's this table they're eating at in the presence of all the Nazis, you know, and God has, this is the one that's prepared the table. You prepare a table before me in the presence. What does that mean, a table before me? We're thinking carnally of food, but what, what other kind of table? He could give you a table of peace, a table of joy, a table of contentment. That's a big one. A table of rest, the, the fruit of the Spirit. He could give you a table of love, love, joy, peace, a table of kindness, of patience, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. He could give you a table of kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, a table of self-control. He can give you a table of anything he wants or anything you desire can be on that table, not just food. Don't think carnally, just carnally. Although a table of food is lovely. And we all know that Thanksgiving. But think of what he can, what he has prepared for us. It's amazing. Amen. Um, and, and he does it in the presence of our enemies. I love that. It's just like it's God's thumbing his nose at your enemies. I love that. Uh, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Man, they always, they always, you know, from Solomon on, they anointed the king. David was anointed. The oil was poured on his head. Saul before him was anointed. The oil, the priest poured oil on it. There's, that has significant Holy Spirit implications. And, and, uh, there's so much about oil in the Bible. You could study that for a long time. There's a lot in there. And my cup overflows. That are the cup of our heart, our cup is abundant. The cup represents our life. My cup, my life is overflowing. I just love that. Amen. Surely goodness and love. <sighs> this is so good. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. What follows you? Goodness, God's goodness and his love. He's good and he's love. His goodness and love follow me. They're pursuing you. Think about that. They're following you. You're like me walking. 
I just walked a half hour. I do one in the morning, half hour at night, half an hour in the morning. I've had some leg swelling, and I figured this is the best way. I'm getting the circulation of my legs going. I've been eating too much salt, so I don't fall. But but look, if I'm out there walking, and goodness and love are following me all the way from my half hour walk. They're pursuing me. His goodness and love will pursue you all the days of your life. Isn't that, a good, isn't that a good thought? Not just some of the days, and that would be good. Some of the days would be good. I'd take it some of the days. Other days, not so much. But all the days of your life, his goodness and love will follow all this. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that ties into Psalms 27, verse 4. Listen to this. This one thing I ask, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and seek him in his temple. Let me say that again. Um, this one thing, I, so I'm asking for one thing. This one thing I ask, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. See, talking about dwelling in the house of the Lord. Same, it, it almost quotes this verbatim, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So whoever, if, I assume David wrote Psalms 27, so I don't know if he was referencing this thought in 23. I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon his beauty. God is beautiful. His heart is beautiful. I can't wait. The Bible says in Revelation, all of his children see his face. Someday even Moses couldn't see his face. And even in his greatness. So all the days of our life, I'll gaze upon the Lord and I will seek him in his temple. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. But you're in his house, his temple. And the person in the Bible, I'm, I'm going to expound. We're not going to do 24 days. I want to expound a little further on this. Uh, Luke 2, uh, one of my heroes, one of my all-time great heroes, top five heroes in the Bible is Anna. And, and I'll quote it here. And it's two, and I never can remember the verses. It's about three or four verses. And this was with Simeon. This was when Mary had Jesus as a baby and took him, Simeon, Simeon's moment where he held him up. And then Anna blessed and spoke and and uh, spoke over Jesus um, but it says there was also the now listen she fulfills this for 60 plus years she fulfilled this verse listen to this this is amazing I've, I've got this in my heart this is locked in me I want to be this person I want to be just like her she's for me the template of what your life could be if you chose for it to be this way and here's the template and here's her life there was also the prophetess Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband for seven years and then was a widow till she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. So I always, I always give the example this way. Say she was 17 and that would some girls married at 15 back then, maybe even earlier, maybe 14. But let's say she was 17. And she said she lived with her husband for seven years. So from 17 to 24, she lived with her husband and then was a widow till she was 84. So from 24, 60 years, 24 to 84, she lived as a widow at the temple, which as a woman, she would not have been permitted to step foot in. So she lived outside the temple and she worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. I listen, I know we all work jobs, but you can you can worship night and day, fasting and praying. Again, not just a food fast. Again, read Isaiah 58, six through 12. If you wanna know what true fasting is, Isaiah chapter 58, verses six through 12. If you wanna know what true, true fasting is, it's far greater, far bigger than just food. But she worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. And she, she never left the temple to worship night and day, fast and pray. Doesn't that sound like I, uh, like Psalms 27, verse 4? This one thing I ask, this is what I seek. She got the one thing she wanted. She This one thing I ask, this one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. In her heart, she dwelled from 24 to 84. And I assume she died at 84 because it quotes that age. So for 60 years, she had her heart's desire. She... There's one thing I ask this way, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Sixty years Anna was there, all the time, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. She saw his beauty. That's why, you wonder why she became a prophetess. She saw the Lord in her heart. 
She saw the Lord days upon the day and seek him in his temple. She sought for 60 years. She sought the Lord at his temple, the temple in Jerusalem before it was destroyed by the Romans. I'm getting 15 minutes into this, man. And so choose, choose, choose this day whom you'll follow. Choose this day what path you're going to walk. And you can choose to have your one desire to be to dwell in his house, to gaze upon his beauty, and to never in your heart leave this, leave his temple. Again, we're the temple of the spirit. And you and and, and but it's much, much bigger than that. So anyway, that's um, uh, Village It Is for Christ. This was Psalms 23 today. And good expounding. It was really, I, the Holy Spirit was really working in my heart here. So anyway, love you, love you, can't get enough of you, appreciate you. And um, we, uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And I don't remember. Oh, I got my book, I'll tell you. See you tomorrow in Revelation. Ooh, Revelation. Amen. Dum, dum, dum. All right, we love you. Have a blessed day. Amen.